Thanks to all the attendees for tuning in to another radio special episode titled Food for Thought. I am the host that goes by the name of James Hatcher, airing on WPPM LP 106.5 FM, Philadelphia. Also telecasting on the television cable networks of Comcast, Xfinity Channel 66, 966, Verizon Files Channel 2930, Roku, Direct TV, Apple TV, which is also promoted as Philly Camp TV, as well as on the James Hatcher YouTube channel. In respect to WPPM and Philly Cam, Philly Cam is a supportive community collective of individuals organizing their creative insights and ideas as well as expressing their experiences into content and broadcasting programs on various forms of media. So in this special episode of Food for Thought, the theme of the topic is building and maintaining a wholesome relationship with acquaintances that enhances self-appreciation. For one to be able to recognize the dynamics of another individual's presence and persona as to be receptive to the similarities of conduct presents the opportunity of unity conducive. Discovering that each individual and association has a goal to accomplish also establishes an interest in combining objective plans into productivity. This sharing of services allows an opportunity for each individual to reflect and appreciate their commitment to accomplish a beneficial outcome. And that is the message as food for thought for this presentation. Joining me now is several band members um, whose combination of sounds from their vocal aspects within their songs to the projection of instruments played amongst them which is not only pleasing to the listener's ears, but also verifies the harmonization of their unity. Without further anticipation, let us welcome the band known as Salter Street. Hello. Yeah. Hey, James. Hello, Good to James. see y'all here. Good I'm very, you. very much happy that you're here uh, joining me for this uh, episode. Uh, I would just like to say that, um, you know, the first time I seen y'all perform, I was an instant admirer of your music and everything like that. So uh, I really appreciate y'all being here. So we could start from the left to the right. Uh, you can introduce yourself and maybe give you us a little bit of background, the listeners a little bit of background with, uh, you know, your part of, you know, the band and what instrument you play. Sure. My name's Terry. Um, I am a vocalist, and I play bass sometimes and also write songs, and that's pretty much my contribution to the band. Okay. Hello, I'm Mark. Uh, I play rhythm guitar and also vocals and write songs as well. Okay. And sometimes you play bass, and sometimes that's I play true. guitar. Sometimes but, I play you know. bass, yeah. yeah don't, don't sell yourself short. I'm Tommy. Uh, I play play only electric guitar not as uh multi multi-talented as uh some of the group here um okay kick it over to brian yeah i, I would i would disagree with that previous statement but um <laughs> tommy is pretty pretty darn talented um i play my name is brian i play harmonica and occasionally some banjo and guitar well it's definitely my pleasure to meet y'all and tommy i just noticed that you have a shirt what does that shirt say Support live music. And that is very fitting for this episode. You made sure you came very prepared for this episode. You look good in it. Thank you. Okay, so um, I actually have, um, you know, some questions, inquiries that, um, you know, compelled me to ask y'all um, due to the inspiration that y'all mm -hmm. have given me. So um, first I'd like to start with um, how was the band Salter Street originated including the origin of the band name and how was each band member joined to make up the band? I mean, that's the easiest question, probably. We all met in guitar class. Oh, okay. Um, so we were taking an advanced guitar class at Mr. John's Music in the Italian market. Shout out to Mr. John's Music. Um, yeah. And we started jamming together and hanging out. And then 
Mark and Tommy and I and another friend of ours got together and formed a band, and I had written some songs, so we started playing those songs. Um, and then one of our ba- that, that band member decided that they just it was too much, they didn't want to do it. And then um, Brian, who was also in our class, was sitting in with us sometimes, playing harmonica, playing banjo. And okay. at that point, we were like, hey, you can add so much more. Why don't you just officially come on board? And the the music studio where we all met is on Salter Street. In okay. The market. Okay. So basically, Mr. you said Mr. John's music. Mm-hmm. That, Mr. John's is that a school? Yeah. It's a music no. school. Oh, okay. Okay. And it was on Salter Street. Yep. Okay. So that's how you got the name. All right. Okay. So as a performing recording artist, and a member of a band, um, for those who just loves to hear your music but not really kind of um, too educational as far as like what type of music in genre, what type of genre would you specify your name, your music to be? You know, some people might say it's alternative. Some people might say it's country. I just say it's yeah. good. So... Yeah, I think I think uh, it's definitely a mix, right? We, we, okay. We, we, I mean, definitely original music. I think we're inspired by Americana, rock and roll for sure. Uh, a little bit of folk and country. Okay. Singer songwriter. Um, you know, even a little kind of blues and funk and jazz in there sometimes. Mm-hmm. So we're really a kind of a mishmash of uh, things and experiences that we've all brought into the band and and. You know, our at the same time, you know, it's very original, authentic. Right. The messages that you present is very, very inspiring. Okay, so um, I guess you already answered, you know, what uh, is the role of each band member portrays and who is responsible uh, for writing a certain lyric. So, Terry and Mark, right? Yeah. So, y'all don't have nothing to do with putting the words together or I anything. Haven't written a lick. Okay. All right. Well, actually, you have written licks. Yeah, well, for, yeah, yeah. For, for the band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then words have been put in. Oh, yeah. those licks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no, what? No lyrics, only musical, uh, yeah. musical licks. But, okay. Guess. One of the things that's been really nice is the way our songwriting has developed. So uh-huh. when we first started, I had a couple of songs, and we were playing those songs, and then Mark wrote some songs. We we're playing Mark songs, and then we started writing together. Okay. So and, what do you mean, Tom, by musical licks? I I. Made, I've joked before that uh, when we've gotten together to do original stuff, mm-hmm. it starts off as uh, you know learning like the the foundation, the chord progression, some of the lyrics that are getting thrown around. But it not being a cover, I don't feel like I have to honor anything in particular. Like I don't have to learn that part or, or match it. Right. And um, it's just kind of open open territory to mess around and then. Whatever lands, we all kind of look at each other like, okay, well, that's the part for that point of the song. You know what I mean? Okay. And okay. That, that's a ton of fun. And Tommy has also written some licks that are now becoming songs that Tommy has started. So some of our songs that we haven't finished yet, but we're almost done, are songs that wouldn't have existed if Tommy hadn't put a couple of like riffs down. I was like, oh, this is cool. What do you guys think of this? And I'm like, oh, let's put these lyrics to it. And Mark's like, oh, let's do this. And Brandon says, let's do that. And then it has become a song. Record an idea, share it. Uh, Thankfully, yeah, like Dropbox and, uh, you know, iCloud, being able to just say, hey, check this out. We have a so band, a band grow- folder. Okay, so you're yeah. constantly growing with, you know, you, the parts that you play and everything and extending that position without, you know, really being direct with it, just going naturally. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I don't think any of the songs would be what they are without each of our contributions, you know, to a, to a, a large degree. So it's really exciting, yeah. actually, and, and super fun to create together. And to go back to, like, an old idea, go back to the well, and it's like, hey, if we forgot that we recorded this random idea and then we pick it back up or, or leave it, that that's a ton of fun. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're going to play a song called Elephant in the Room. One, two... One, two, three. in your mouth. 
So uh, this is basically to the songwriters. I'm very interested in um, seeing what you have to say in your perspective. Um, when putting a configuration of words together to make up lyrics to a song, what can be a useful practice that an inspiring songwriter can utilize to find the proper word that will emphasize the message of the song? You know, I think every songwriter has to come to that in their own way. And for me, and this is just for me, okay. Um, like I wrote a bunch of songs when I was younger that were terrible, like just bad, bad songs. And it was because I was trying to force songs to be about something as opposed to just writing about my life and my experience and my relationships. And I think as I got older and had more complicated life experiences and relationships and Honestly, it's kind of like therapy for me, writing songs. I'm processing right. my life. I'm processing what I'm feeling or how I am in relation to someone else or thoughts about other people. And I think it's what you kind of said a little bit before, James, is being authentic and being authentic to, your, to yourself and what you're trying to say. And that you're trying to say something. You're not just trying to make a song. Right. Like if you're just trying to like, oh, I'm going to write a song now and it's going to, oh, gosh, what's it going to be about? Like some people can do that. I can't do that. Like for mm -hmm. me, it has to come from something in my life right okay so uh what do you think are some factors that make your music compelling enough for listening for the listening audience to either visualize the subject matter of the song uh, or for them to take on a feeling that they are experiencing like the event or situation that may be spoken through your songs which at times might make them feel like you know that's song is really meant for them. Do you tend to present the majority of songs in the form of stories, like you said, or do you stick uh, with the message dealing with like the circumstances that could be related, like the sign of the times or what you see as far as in your environment? Um, first of all, I, I just hope that anyone listens to our songs and likes them and like feels <laughs> that they can see something in them that's good or if they can relate to it even better. Um, but I think it's a combination of all of those things. Like, there's definitely songs that we have one song right now that actually was a time we started that is more about kind of society and the times and what's happening. Really? Um, but for the most part, I hope people can, I don't know, like maybe my experience or Mark's experience is our collective experience. Somehow people can relate to that because, again, it is an authentic lived experience that we're writing about. So hopefully. Okay, so Tommy, you're writing, you're working on a, pro a song right now, a project that's basically uh, influenced by, like, you know, worldly events, or is that from, like, watching news, or is I this... Think, <laughs> no, I think, I think that area? comes from the group here, and uh, usually it'll be, um, yeah, a, a music idea to, to start, and then, and then, like I said, we'll share it, and and kind of workshop it to a point where then it feels like it has a maybe a clearer direction rather than just kind of like an idea in a vacuum right um and yeah i think maybe more on the lyric side it, it can kind of um be more broad commentary than than story but i, I at least for me it's always a a musical idea first and building it out from there um, right Right, so um, being that, you know, you see the significance of, like, you know, the message in your music, uh, do you feel like it's more of a responsibility when you, pr when you promote your music to the audience that it's a responsibility for them to have the message that you're presenting as uh, something that they can validate in their life as far as, like, you know, what's going on? I mean, for me... I Perfectly honestly, I mostly write for me. Right. Like I'm, yeah. I, I, I love that people might want to listen to our music, but right. I generally am not thinking about an audience right. when I'm writing. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's how you feel about that, if that's true for you when you're writing. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, back to a little bit of your earlier question, I'm definitely, I'm similar to Tommy, where I'm, I'm definitely driven by the musical inspiration first. And I think one of the cool things that we've discovered is that. Terry not only can bring her own musical and lyrical ideas to the band, but also if we present her with a musical idea, sometimes I think you get inspired and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, it clicks into a message that, that she creates into a song. And, and I think collectively how we try to translate that to the audience is it's clear we all 
really feel passionate about the music and and the lyrics and and the songs as a whole and i think that that comes across you know when we when we play on stage and i think sometimes the audience the audience feels that because we really love what we're, what we're doing so. right right mm-hmm. and they can sense that you have a purpose of just being up there not just producing because when i heard you i was like man these individuals they got a purpose they're they're on a mission they got a message that they're putting out there you know whether uh, you know everybody else wasn't paying attention i'm like you know yeah i I think you're the exception james because i don't think people often listen to the lyrics and i think one of the things that i mean as musicians you need to have good lyrics but also if it doesn't musically sound great which is where like brian and tommy and mark that they and you know I think Mark and I too singing together like adds a unique sound as well and like having all that together is what people are listening to and you have to get the attention with the mm-hmm. music okay and then once you have their attention and after they listen to the song maybe not that anyone ever listens to our songs a couple times but assuming someday people are listening to our songs a couple times then they might I think start to listen yeah more to what because we're saying. you know yeah. just the sound you know they'll get into wanting to hear it more and more and then naturally they're going to start paying attention to the words because they're listening to it over and over again is there a certain kind of environmental setting that each band member prefers to rehearse and to stimulate a creative process yeah i i I love that question um i i just immediately think of the parking lot actually Uh like before there's a before there's a, a a full uh band there's there are these parking lot jams um, that um, just were very conducive to getting to know each other, to trying out. Mostly we were playing other people's songs, but it was playing together. So it got it, you know, and, and having this fun together to give a nod to, to Catherine, um, who, who used to play piano um, or still plays piano, but used to play not, piano not with us. the band. Um, this idea of having fun together. Okay. And then... Um, and, and continuing this feeling from the music school where we met, because mm-hmm. the, the parking lot was adjacent to the music school. And it was during COVID when we weren't doing anything inside, right. early no, COVID. Right. So all of you like, you know, perform, you like to perform in the parking lot, or do y'all have specific, okay, you like the parking lot, so. Yeah. The, the, it, the, parking lot was where, the parking lot was where we came together. So we, okay. would have, we would have class, after class, we'd all be wearing masks in class, we'd go outside, and that was a place where we could take off our masks. Okay. We could just hang out for hours and, you know, have a couple beers, drink some wine, jam, have a really nice time. Okay, and that so was, I think, how it started. If y'all, you know, not together and stuff like that, is there, like, a specific environment that you feel like, you know, you like to go to just to, you know, formulate? Home. I mean, Home. in my, I have like, a corner um, in the, you know, we, we live in a two-bedroom apartment. The second bedroom is, like, a work from home set up and uh you know there's a couch that pulls out for if we have people like visiting from out of town but the other corner is like all guitar gear oh okay <laughs> like, all right well, that then, leads yeah. me to okay so um is there a consideration um to rehearse in the presence of random individuals or do you prefer to rehearse privately to prevent a possible unwarranted distraction yeah i i think that's kind of how our our band started you know it was us kind of playing with a, a larger group of people and then you know we realized that kind of the four of us really enjoyed playing with each other and then it kind of became its own entity so i think you know not personally opposed to rehearsing in front of other people but i think we've noticed the magic of ourselves being together um and for me that's that's been super inspiring so i think the collective of us has has been a really cool part of this Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I w- I would say that again they're two separate things. Like I love when we all four of us or one of us or whatever some you know we jam with other musicians. We have lots of instrument musicians. That's really fun. But as far as actually practicing what we're doing, I think in our own we keep it tight. We keep it tight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we keep it tight. The next song we're gonna play is called Geraldine. Mm-hmm. 
Geraldine didn't get very far on her way home. Saw a star shooting across the sky and it stopped her dead. Always two sheets and blowing in the wind, ah, oh, Geraldine. Until she met a gust that knocked her down so hard, she couldn't get back up again, oh, Geraldine. Not again, ah, Geraldine. Ah, Geraldine, she tried her best. Sometimes more, but usually less. Now, Geraldine can get some rest. Just look at all that is in. might be a weird uh, question, but I have to ask you this. Okay, so do any of the band members that is a player of an instrument or a songwriter, do you like to incorporate the influence of external sounds from an object that exists in an environment that one may dwell in to make an impressible pattern of a tune and then make a song from that impression? For example, it could be a sound of a ticking car engine, drop of a water from a tree branch, or footsteps of a walk. Do you ever, you know, hear music into those? I, I mean... A, have you ever had, like, an idea to make a song from something that you heard? 
I once recorded a song with another friend. This is before we were a band together. And in the recording, we used packing tape to make a sound um, okay. in the recording that was supposed to be like a ship, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but that was really fun. Um, I don't I don't think I do that. I, what I notice Tommy does is Tommy mimics sounds on his guitar sometimes. Really? I, I had that thought of like uh, we uh, like when we sound checked, you did Angel from Montgomery and um, what is the part uh, fly buzzing in the kitchen. Uh, one time it occurred to me, like, maybe I try to sound like a fly on the guitar. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, not that it does or it got pretty close. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> but, but that idea and then uh, that has led me. I don't have other examples that come to mind, but maybe, yeah, mirroring the lyric that's right. happening in right. some way. Exactly. Um, either like literally or, or counterpoint kind of idea. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So, um, what recognizable distinction of abilities and talents uh, that each of you may possess, which sets you apart from the rest of the members in the band, although the talents of each member is equally uh, attributive to complement each other? Do you feel um, like it could be your stage performance? Like what makes you stand out? The interaction, you know, your individual interaction within the crowd or uh, even the, the business aspect of how you promote your band? I mean, I can say what they all do really well. <laughs> um, like Tommy has this just amazing skill of listening to a song and just finding exactly the right part on the guitar and sometimes it's really guitar forward and sometimes it's really pulled back and sometimes it's like just a little bit here but he here he has a talent of hearing a song and knowing what will make it better okay like it's a beautiful beautiful skill wow like you. nice compliment yeah so okay. i'll throw it back because we'll do like the popcorn thing okay yeah <laughs> No, I, I think I'm, I'm always I'm so impressed with the, the songwriting and seeing both both Terry and Mark both as sometimes um, writing uh, apart, sometimes together. But this and it's been prolific in the last couple of years. So that for me has has been that's drawn me to them. And and then I make personal connections to the songs they're writing. And that is like, oh, wow, now I want to figure out how to support that. Um, so I think that the songwriting has, and I do think people notice that, you know, it's not that people are listening to her songs, you know, on repeat, but I think people have commented, you know, specifically about your songwriting. And I do think our songwriting has gotten better since we've been writing together. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that makes a big difference when we're writing, yeah, in conjunction with each other. Yeah. I got to yeah, tack onto that. The, the dynamics, I think Mark, especially, and you, Brian, with harmonica and banjo, like knowing, you know, when to get louder and when to when to fall back a bit and when to uh, when to leave space and when to come in. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something, too, that has evolved more, you know, with um, more recent songs, kind of having that feel. And I don't know, it's almost like a three dimensional component of moving in and out. In addition to the part that, you know, you guys are playing. I think that's really cool. It has been neat to see our, like each other and ourselves as a group evolve. And I will never forget, we played a gig um, and we, sat, we had a drummer sitting with us who's not a drummer who had never heard any of our songs before. Um, but he's a great drummer and he sat in yeah. with us. And we played Geraldine and Geraldine is a song that starts slow but then like gets double time. It gets really fast. And the drummer didn't know that. And he didn't speed it up, and so it was really slow. And Tommy does this long solo in that song, and so he, he did this solo, and it was like completely different than any solo he's ever done for that song before because the speed was so different. And afterwards, Tommy was like, I felt like a real musician, which you are a real musician, but it was this moment of like, oh, I can be adaptable in the moment. And it's kind of neat to see you know, each other like make those like connections to the music and times like oh like i did that really well because you did you did that brilliantly that was like a train on the tracks like going to i'm like it, this is way different like i i can't like in my head i'm telling myself i can't 
shoehorn what I'm used to doing into mm -hmm. what's happening right now because the drummer is doing a different thing. And I like what the drummer is doing a lot. So like being able to react live and feel like I was pretty happy with it, that, right. that was really cool. And I think, you know, just to tack on to what Tommy was saying earlier, Brian especially, but I, I think we all have a good ability to really listen to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, that's that's not always the case when you play with a lot of people. You know, people are super talented, and you know, but they're a little bit in their in their own box. Um, and I think what's super exciting is is all of us try to listen to each other, and then it really becomes kind of more of a collaborative. And I, I think creation just by listening to you guys and hearing y'all converse uh, with you know your compliments and everything. I think that what makes your bond very obvious. You know, and that you know that inspires other people to take on that same type of uh, impression. So I really appreciate that. The next song we're going to play is called Say It Out Loud. One, two, one, two. There's things you never showed me and things you never told me, things you never wanted to say. You might like wasting your time and stop wasting your mind. Maybe, baby, let me know Seems like we're wasting away And it's time to go ahead and say it out loud Don't leave no peace of sound It's kind of hard to meet you halfway When you ain't got nothing to say You said we'd be together I should have asked whether that was on my terms of yours Shows we've wasted away and it's time to go. that there are po um, possible benefits in your music um, that may have certain influences, which I just answered, um, but I want you to answer, and can be essential to the mental health for not only yourself, but also to others, and how? I mean, certainly for me, it's great for my own mental health. Um, it's cheaper than therapy. And I get to process things. Right. So writing yeah. songs is amazing because right. you know it really helps me personally sort out stuff, but also. Um, and not everybody could do that. No, no, I need it very much. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's great, and also it's just the most fun I have. Like yeah. hanging yeah. out with these guys and playing music is the highlight of my life at the moment. It is just the thing I want to do all the time. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, I mean, just the pure joy honestly that that i get out of uh you know playing with these guys and and just creating together is you know honestly it's it's more fun than i ever expected to be honest so just super grateful that we get to do it all right wonderful okay so uh with the ability to express yourself through the music that may extend uh beyond stage performances into other personal endeavors and activities engaged in enhancing the qualities of life for you, do you ever feel that there are messages 
or lessons in the songs that you may integrate into daily routines to maintain a healthy lifestyle, what song would that be and why? Like, what song of yours do you like to listen to uh, for motivation that reminds you of your purpose? That's easy for me. Okay, you tell me. Go first. No, no, no. I was just going to say, great question. Go ahead. Okay. (laughs) I mean, for me, it's Open Road. um, Because Open Road is a song that, um, I guess, Mark, you wrote the music, and then I wrote lyrics. So again, it was one of those where Mark started a song, and I was like, oh, I have this idea. And it's a song about... I think this is especially true as a woman. You live your life with societal expectations of who you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to act and how you're supposed to behave. And you do that, or I did that for a really long time, tried really hard to live up to the expectations until I realized that's not me. That's not good. That doesn't feel good for me. I'm Again, I'm fitting myself into this box that doesn't feel like who I am. And as I got older and, and as an adult, I finally realized I don't have to do any of that. I can actually just live my life how I want to live my life, and I don't have to adhere to these rules of society. And so Open Road is about that. So it's a song for me that's very uplifting and reflects a journey in my life to a much healthier place. This next song is called Open Road.
taken away From everything I've been told to be away From this life I didn't make, I'm breaking free Free from these chains I built one link at a time That's what I'm supposed to be Is there any song that you have composed that was specifically about or directed to a certain individual personally? <laughs> Every single one of them. <laughs> or a group or a group that may had or have a relationship with? And if so, have you ever performed the song in a public arena without the expectation of that individual or group to be aware of that song that pertains to the relationship that you have with them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you give us an example? Um, a lot of my early songs, I first started songwriting um, when I was going through a divorce. Okay. Um, and my life is always very complicated, and so I'm, I'm now in a relationship with my ex-husband. Um, but I wrote a bunch of songs about us and our divorce, and he has since obviously listened to those songs. So are you saying that you're back with your yeah. ex? So do you think that... Because you wrote those songs that he, you know... Oh, he didn't hear them until after we got back together. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so have you... That's always the running question is, yeah. has he heard this one yet? Yeah. Okay. Well, he will this weekend. <laughs> All right, so uh, have you or any of the band members collaborated uh, or is presently collaborating with another music artist that is not a band member and is from another band while being a member of the band that you're currently in or are you expecting to in the near future do you have y'all ever looked outside of like you know the band and everything and said yeah i might want to collaborate with this artist yeah whatever. i mean i i still are y'all just stuck together y'all <laughs> we're definitely stuck together but definitely right. stuck together yeah i still play um you know semi-regularly with uh with another group of, of friends um kind of in a, in a similar band dynamic but it's it's definitely a little bit more casual and uh we're not creating original music okay um so it's kind of it's super fun for me because that is its own space and we generally mm -hmm. kind of do a little bit of a free jam or or do covers Whereas, you know, this is, is a little bit more creative, which okay. has been super rewarding for me personally. Okay. Yeah. Both are investments, though. Yeah. That's I, right. Yeah. I was going to say not really, like, collaborating towards uh, towards an output, like writing songs or uh, performing, but always, like, wanting to jam with other people. Parking Lot was a great <laughs> example of that. Um, We're always down to jam. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And well, I, I think y'all are perfect together. <laughs> Thank you. you know? Yeah. I sure. sing sometimes with a friend of ours, our friend Tom Gala, who is an amazing musician, um, and he's yeah. a prolific singer-songwriter, and I'll sometimes sit in with his band and sing vocals, but, I mean, again, it's a less creative space. Like, it's it's his music, right. and I'll sing yeah. on his music, and it's okay. super fun. I love it. I love Okay. I've performed with him a couple of times, but, like... Again, it's not this. This is right. This is like this is like a sacred space. Right. Yeah. So even yep. if you're performing with these other artists, you're constantly thinking about you yes. know Salter Street. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of Tom Gala, the um, the Mermaid Inn in Chestnut Hill is a spot that we've played a lot at, and they they've open mics as well. And we've been to the open mics, and you know, and people, it's the same crew that keeps returning every month. So we get to know people, and yeah. people have asked us to sit in with them, and they've sit in, they've sat in with us, and wow, and that feels like this kind of, 
this non-competitive cross pollinization yeah. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. thing going on where, where people yeah. are just kind of supporting and playing with each other and not not so much career minded towards you right know, when's the next gig okay this is called things are going to change <clears throat>
All right, so um, how can an individual that enjoys listening to your music locate you online as well as setting up um, booking you for performances, and do you perform at a specific location on a frequent basis? Yes, yeah, so we are, we are on the Instagram, uh, just at Salter Street. Uh, we also are on YouTube, uh, again, at Salter Street. But, yeah, if anyone wants to connect with us, definitely um, find us on Instagram, shoot us a message. Um, you know, we're definitely really excited about performing and, and continuing to play live and, you know, certainly looking for opportunities as well um, to get our music out there. So definitely reachable there. Yeah, we don't have any regular performances, and we perform when we can and as much as we can, but nothing nothing regular or recurring yet. Well, I really appreciate y'all being here and just giving us this opportunity and the listeners an uh, opportunity to really uh, see that, you know, you guys are really um, diamonds in the rough. Thank you, James. You know, and uh, I really appreciate y'all here. So um, I would like to thank each member of the band Salter Street for making themselves present uh, for this episode. And I'm sure that you will continue to be an upliftment to the community you are in. Um, I also like to thank Allison Dorham, radio operator and program coordinator, for making this possible as well. Um, once again, my name is James Hatcher. You can also check out my book, Food for Thought, Literary Concept to Theoretical Reasoning, on several online bookstores. Thank you. I am the host uh, for this radio special title, Food for Thought, for Philly Cam Radio, WPPM 106.5 FM, uh, and Philly Cam TV. Um, you can keep in recognition of my activities on my Facebook page, which is James Hatcher, and watch previous episodes on my YouTube channel, which is uh, simply James Hatcher, as you can search James Hatcher Food for Thought on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, when enjoying the content. And other than that, um, on your journeys, everybody take care of yourselves. <laughs>